Okay, this lab is another one of mine that has turned out pretty well on a mostly shoestring budget. Now you're going to need some of the stuff that I mentioned in some of the previous ones. Uh, I have a binder clip, binder clips, like the best invention of mankind ever, as you will see as you watch more of my lab videos. I have a binder clip up on the drop ceiling like I did in the pendulum lab. Um, I have, in fact, this is the setup from the Pendulum Lab still, but again, I use these multiple times. That's why it helps for me to have the craft string that I just loop up, and it's got this little clip here that last time we hooked the masses directly to for the Pendulum. You're going to see what we're going to do this time. And for this, to do a static equilibrium lab, at least the way I set it up, and this is a classic one that you've seen many times before, but usually, for the ones that I've seen, you need a special arm to hold it, or you need to drill some hooks into your meter stick, or your yard stick, whatever you'd prefer using. I found a way that's nice and non-destructive and relatively easy to set up. Now, we still have the spring clip here, which I still recommend getting some of those uh, if you don't have them, attached to the craft string that goes up through the binder clip up on the ceiling. And I've got it back down here. Uh, hopefully you guys can see, let me double check. Yeah, it's barely in frame down here, but I've got a C clamp. I recommend getting a, a few of these if you can. They can be a lot more expensive compared to the other stuff, but it's nice having something that you can reliably you can trust it to hold a decent amount of weight. Not that we're going to be using a lot of weight on this, because as a reminder, our failure point is up there on the ceiling with the binder clip. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about that soon enough. But the binder clips are actually the key to making this work. So take your meter stick, and you take one of these one inch binder clips, and I get it centered at 50. Now, what I've done is I've put it where it's clipping on the bottom here, because watch what I do. I flip these up, and now I've actually got a pretty good place to connect this. So I take the spring clip and I do that. That's a pretty good connection. I've done this at least two years and it's gone over pretty well. In fact, this is one that the students have enjoyed quite a bit. Now I usually take some of the smaller ones. Uh, I can get a measurement on this, but I'd say, oh, well, it's right here. Um, this is right at about two centimeters actually. So this is probably maybe two thirds of an inch, something like that. Um, but get maybe four or five of these per lab station. Again, I lifted this up earlier. I bought two of these last year and I'm slowly making my way through them. I recommend getting some of these and holding on to them. Binder clips work great for all sorts of stuff. Um, one of the things uh, my instructions for this lab usually start off with the students having say at 30, put the clip on on top this time, centered about 30, and flip the hook down. You only really need one hook. Uh, for this one, because the other thing that you're going to need are weighted masses. Now, hopefully you have some of these. If you don't, because these can get kind of expensive, another thing that you can do is go buy a box of washers from a, a hardware store and get more of these spring clips. I told you that they'd be useful, because what you can do is you can take four or five washers and put them on the spring clip and try and close the spring clip, and then just hook the spring clips onto here. Now, in addition to that, though, because what you want is something that you know the masses of, you'll want to have them measure it out on a scale and try and get it as close as you can to useful values, right? So in this case, if you have the weighted masses, they're much better. If I put 100 here at the 30 centimeter mark, you'll notice that the, the meter stick is now no longer level. It is, it is very much leaning to one side. And so what you set the students up to do is to try and balance that meter stick. And so I have them go through and I start them off with say 100 at maybe the 30 centimeter mark, which puts it 20 centimeters from the middle. So my lever arm is 0.2 meters and I have a mass of 0.1 kilograms. I could come out here and do instead of, so a lever arm of 20, let's do a lever arm of 40. So I'm going to put my next one here centered at 90, flip that down, and I can take a 50 gram mass And lo and behold, pretty well balanced. It may not be perfectly level, but as long as it's not going huge angles, then you're in good shape. Now, as many astute people will notice, the mass of the clips will also throw this off ever so slightly. You can have them weigh the clips and keep track of it. I believe these come in right at about three grams. Um, with my setup, with my ceiling thing, and the trick that I'm using with the binder clip up there, 
I only give them, the largest one that I let them play with is a 200 gram and only one of them. Keep the 500 grams away and don't give them a kilogram or anything like that. Um, I usually give them one 200, one 100, usually two 50s, a couple of 20s, and a 10. And I let them play around with that. Even with them kind of loading all those up, I haven't had it pull down off of the ceiling yet. Okay? Um, one thing that you probably want to do, since this can kind of fluctuate about, you might want them to wear safety glasses so nothing can hit them in the face. Uh, and then if something falls off, it doesn't, you know, hit them in the face or anything like that. Um, on top of that, I believe one year some of my students attempted to weaponize this by turning it into some sort of catapult. Um, I don't know if I recommend that or not, um, but that's the most that I've run into with problems with it. Most of the students seem to like it. One of the ways that I set it up is I walk them through setting up this and then getting it balanced. And then I tell them using, I have them say, do something where it's like, okay, now take the 100 and put it at the 40 centimeter mark. Oop. And then using say a 20, do I have a 20 here? Not all of my equipment's out, it's still the summer. Um, this is a 20 gram. Find out by process of elimination, if need be, where they would need to put this. Um, my instructions for them it would need to be five times out, so it's got to be out here on the very edge. Pretty close. So you can see that it's level. It's not perfectly level, but this is still very close, and it's, it's good enough for what they're looking for. If we have something where it's up like this, we know that it's not level. But as long as it's pretty level, the students have been pretty good at figuring that out. Um, I've even, across all of my classes, I've left them with the instructions of they need to find a mathematical equation that will predict balancing this. And then when they think they have it, I come in and I throw them a curveball if they haven't already done it. This is why you need extra clips. Let's say at the 10 centimeter mark, I've got, what's this guy, 50 or 20? 20. So I've got 20 there and then maybe 50 back over here at 40 centimeters or something like that. I'm randomly throwing this in there. It helps to plan it out beforehand. I've got it written down somewhere, but um, I'm not certain that I'd be able to balance this one easily. In short, most of them will end up with the equation that the mass times the distance from the center has to be equal. And so I, if they get stuck, I'll actually come through and tell them, okay, well, I've told you to find an equation for it. An equation is about balancing one thing and setting it equal to another. So it's having one side being the same as the other. So imagine the middle point here being your equal sign because you'd have some stuff here and some stuff here that you're trying to balance. And that usually gives them an idea to, okay, I'm gonna set my equals here so the stuff on this side I do something with mathematically and it's gotta equal the stuff over here. Usually within about half an hour or so, one person in the group will stumble across mass times distance from the center will actually be the thing that they're looking for. It's a simplified form of uh, balancing torques, of course, because it's mass times lever arm, as opposed to the actual force times lever arm. And then afterwards, when I work them through it, I tell them the one thing that they couldn't measure, but is important to be there, is the acceleration due to gravity to get the actual weight of these guys. One of the final things that you can do, because once they have it set up with the mass times the distance of this side equal the other side, you can actually go through and you can give them three or four different masses put wherever, and they'll be able to balance it. I had students that would go through and I'd give them just a random one where it's not even on the nice, even, you know, 10 centimeters or five centimeters. There was one where they calculated that they had to put a 20 gram mass at like 13.2 centimeters or something. So they came over here, counted out the 13.2, they put it there and it would end up balancing it. This is one of the upsides of doing it with the clips as much as they're slightly off in weight they do allow the students to freely put it anywhere they want and your meter stick doesn't have to be sacrificed to this specific lab. The other thing that you can do, and I didn't do much of this, but I want to in the future, is talk about center of mass. Because what you can do then is you can actually tell the students, okay, I want you to imagine that the meter stick has a weight and that it's always right here in the dead center at 50. What if I put my clip at 60, so it's 10 centimeters off, they can now imagine that 
the weight of the meter stick is right here at the 50. It's another hanging mass, just like they saw. Using the stuff that they have, predict the weight of the meter stick. And so if I were to go and do, say, 70, because now they still have this center part as our equal sign. I think the 50 should about do it, though it'll be a little, oh, no, wait. Because um, it will actually, different meter sticks weigh different amounts, too. And so this one isn't quite balanced, but they could go through and they could bring this in a little bit. That's pretty good. And so they can adjust this and say, okay, well, I've got 100 grams at looks like 8.8 .8 centimeters from the middle. And then the meter stick is 10 centimeters. So this is probably, the meter stick's going to be a little bit shy of 100 grams. It'll probably end up being like 93 or something like that. I think some of my meter sticks came up to that. Helps to have a scale on hand for them to actually double check that. The one final thing that I will bring up is uh, if you're like me and you're just using the hooked masses that came with your classroom, some of them might not actually be the value that they're marked. Some of them might be a little bit off. So you might also double check if you've got ones that have strange results, have them double check with the scale, or if you can, check them beforehand. Um, again, everything that you want to do individually, up to you, but I've found this to be a very easy way with a little bit of investment and a little bit of setup to actually go through and get this classic experiment of balancing things. And you can easily turn this, I use this actually to introduce torques and sum of torques. Because I get them looking at this, thinking about, okay, the, the, how much it weighs is important, but also how far away it is. So this is a great way to give them something visual to connect to, that when you start talking about lever arms and distances, it becomes really, really useful for them to have this. And if you do rotational mechanics, I usually do statics, static equilibrium with balancing torques and forces. And then we start looking into, okay, what happens when you don't have it perfectly balanced and you start having things spinning. And so this is a great way to transition from non-rotational mechanics, so if you've done energy and forces and all of that, to then transition into looking at it with rotational mechanics. So hopefully that was useful for you.